In 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was opened and from the beginning, it was not performing as expected. Spanning an arm of the Puget Sound in America's Washington state, workmen had nicknamed it Galloping Gertie because of its movement in windy conditions. Advanced engineering techniques had allowed the architect to build a very light, elegant looking suspension bridge to carry two lanes of traffic. But in winds as light as 60 kilometers an hour, the roadway would develop a disturbing rippling motion. After having been open for just four months, a stiff breeze triggered an extreme new lateral movement that was beyond the bridge's engineering limits. The collapse was caused by a phenomenon unknown at the time, called aeroelastic flutter. Though the Tacoma Narrows Bridge had been strong enough to bear the weight of large volumes of traffic, its narrow width, its thin profile and its lack of stiffness caused the structure to generate lift in the wind, just like an aircraft's wing. At the time, it had been the third longest suspension bridge in the world. And engineers had only taken into account the lateral force of the wind against the structure, not the lifting tendency of the bridge itself. Bridge design changed radically after the lessons learned from the failure of the Tacoma Bridge. Remarkably, the only life lost in the failure was a dog called Tubby that would not leave the car when his master decided it was safer to escape by crawling back across the bridge than to continue driving to the other side. From that point onward, new bridge designs were tested as scale models in wind tunnels to appreciate how they would behave in the wind.